Hope has turned to heartbreak in Western Australia after 45 stranded pilot whales were euthanised. Volunteers managed to get them back into the water at Chains Beach yesterday before they then re-stranded themselves. Joining us live now is wildlife scientist Dr Vanessa Perotta. Vanessa, thank you for your time. Look, we can all understand that must have been an absolutely heart-wrenching decision for authorities to make over there in, in WA on, on the beach near Albany. Was there really no other realistic option on the table except to euthanise those whales? Good afternoon. The team had absolutely done everything that they could have done. And so it's with that 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 next step of decision making was undertook. And and I will say as, as one of the onlookers from around Australia and many around the world, that really was key here. There was nothing we can do, but we were really relying on people in the field to undertake that triage system. Once they've worked with the animals that still remained alive, were they the ones that were potential candidates to, to have that optimistic option of taking them out to the sea? And unfortunately, well, fortunately, we were able to, the crew were able to get a, a number of them in the water together at one time. And so it was keeping with that, that pod mentality or that group mentality where they're all there together. Now, that unfortunately saw the animals in the water, which was a good thing, but they turned around and they re-stranded. So then the next option was then undertaken by authorities and veterinarians. This is never taken lightly, but the next most, most I would say, more humane way would be that of euthanasia to put these animals out of their suffering as a result of they're more than likely going to restrand again. And often these are the types of things we see when we have a stranding event just like this. And Vanessa, will the cause of that stranding event remain a mystery? I read that authorities are going to be taking samples from the whales for examination. Could those samples, do you think, shed some light on, on what went wrong here? What will they be looking for? Potentially. So every single stranding around the world, regardless of species, is going to be different. And these animals might have come ashore due to different prior reasons that was different to, say, the Tasmanian strandings last year. So there's so many things to consider. But, yes, you're right. If there's anything here, it's a silver lining, and that is two things in this case. One is the biological samples that we can acquire from these animals that are relatively an offshore species and very inaccessible for researchers. So this is really interesting. Scientists are taking blood samples, blubber, teeth, looking at inside their stomachs potentially. Not all of them, or maybe it might be all of them. And then the other section or the other silver lining of this is the drone observation pre-stranding. So this does provide some key insights as to what might be going on with these animals and what might be taking place prior to such events. So it's, it's a very big undertaking and often the answers that we seek may never be answered. And, and unfortunately, uh, we might remain in the same position as we are right now, not knowing why they've done it. But certain components might provide a better understanding as to what kind of state health-wise these animals were in.